Is that right? Oh, good. I, I was confused when I was walking to the tube, when I was walking to the metro this morning, every woman said, ciao bello to me. So I thought that was hello, but buongiorno. It, it, it's kind of embarrassing because I, I speak no Italian, sorry. But my great-grandmother uh, was from Calabria. Um, my great-grandfather had a big scar, a big wound in his leg, because after they were married, one month after they were married, he criticised her cooking, so she stabbed him with a knife. So I really like Italian cooking, okay? <laughs> let, me just, let me just say that in case you have a knife. Uh, I even pizza, your pizza's really good. It's almost as good as the American original, actually. So, uh, well done, Italy, there for the, for the food. As you can tell, don't take this talk too seriously. This is How to Destroy the Web. I'm Bruce Lawson. I work for Opera, the European browser. And uh, I warn you, don't take it too seriously. Please don't be offended. It is easy to upset geeks. With this slide, I can upset five different <laughs> groups of geeks. Star Wars, Star Trek, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and typographers can all be upset by this. So, uh, <clears throat> in America, I, I give them a, a trigger warning. Do you know a trigger warning? To warn them that they might be upset. Uh, this is a tigger warning. If you come to my house and drink all my whiskey and smoke all my marijuana and then fall asleep on my sofa, I will put my children's toys on your head and show you in every country I visit, okay? <laughs> Tim Berners-Lee. Who's heard of Tim Berners-Lee? Tim Berners-Lee, an another Englishman. Timbo, I call him. Timbo said... The principles of universality of access, irrespective of hardware or software platform, network infrastructure, language, culture, geographical location, physical or mental impairment, are core values. This, my friends, is hippie bullshit, okay? <clears throat> now, you, you, before I tell you how to destroy the web, I need to tell you why to destroy the web. This is a, this is, this, you can buy this uh, in the States, apparently. So my children, they are 14 and 12. When they were younger, they asked me, Dad, why does everybody want to bomb Iran? And I said, it's easy. Everybody in Iran is evil, right? So we need to bomb them. If America wants to bomb them, we're a good English family, so we want to bomb them too. <clears throat> so my kids said, are you sure everybody's evil in Iran? So I had a look. We looked on the internet and uh, we found some blogs. This is I'm an Iranian daughter and it's a woman in Tehran describing how sad she is. Hi, you've missed the good bits. Hi, <laughs> take a seat. Good to see you. Don't let me embarrass you. Um, <clears throat> so she's... She's sad because her father's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And this is a woman in Tehran writing about how she doesn't like that she has to wear the big black clothes in the summer. <clears throat> and my daughter said, how can I hate these people? Because these are just like normal people. And this is one of the problems with the web. It lets us see the real lives of other people. And if we see the real lives of other people, it's difficult to hate who the government say we have to hate, so it's a problem. <clears throat> I met a guy who complained that there were bloggers in Burma, Myanmar, who were leaking information about government atrocities because he had a factory that made handcuffs, you know, handcuffs. And uh, every time this news came out on the web, people would stand outside his factory and protest, and it damaged his business. In Egypt, when they had the Arab Spring, they understood that the web was causing or helping a revolution. So we saw at Opera, they turned the web off. They just turned the web off so people couldn't communicate because the web helps people discuss without the government, without the, the media. 
This is the preem of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan. There's a problem called Twitter right now, and you can find every kind of lie there. The thing that is called social media is the biggest trouble for society now. Free speech is a big trouble for governments, and the web is built on free speech. This is the Dow Jones Index. See that? This was caused one day when Associated Press tweeted this. Two explosions in the White House and Barack Obama is injured. They were hacked. Later they tweeted this. We've been hacked. That last tweet wasn't true. But this shows... Now, if you're a hippie, you will think this shows that Western capitalism is very fragile. But I'm not a hippie. I'm into web destruction. This shows how dangerous the web is. The web damages trade, it causes social unrest, and it encourages mistrust of authority. And therefore, the web must be destroyed. Are you with me? So I know what you're thinking. The web must be destroyed, but how can I help on this noble web destruction mission? So this afternoon, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that you, as a web developer, can take home today and do your little piece for the destruction of the web. <coughs> for a long time, the web was kind of destroying itself. In <laughs> <coughs> Any English people in the audience? OK, well, Internet Explorer was resting on its laurels. Uh, yeah. <coughs> and uh, this was a problem because Internet Explorer 6 didn't move. So it encouraged developers to code just for IE6. But luckily, everybody hated the monoculture of one dominant browser. And this went away. Or did it? PPK, a Dutch developer, had a poll in which he said, do you hope that WebKit will become the only rendering engine? and the others will gradually disappear. And 32% said, yes, we want just one rendering engine because it will make our jobs easier. If you code for just one rendering engine, you are helping to destroy the web. So do this. Do this. Just code for one rendering engine. You could use this editor, Coda2. And if you choose to make a gradient in Coda2, it will only give you the WebKit CSS. If it gave you Moz linear gradient, then it would work in Firefox. But we believe in destroying the web. We believe in one single web browser. So this is great. Use it. Use it tomorrow. Destroy the web. Because we know, we, are, we all are sure that the browser landscape never changes, does it? Look at this graph. Never changes. So you can be certain that the browser you choose to give your websites for will always be the dominant one, can't you? You can be sure. Only allow users with the right devices in. People often ask me, Bruce, what is the right device? The answer is simple. It's the one that you and your friends have. That's the right device. And anybody else has no right to see your website. Sorry, Chalk works on the iPad only. There's a guy called Mark Pilgrim who works for Google and did a lot of work with the early HTML5 spec. He said, visiting a URL that says I have to be on an iPad is like saying I need to install a plugin that costs $500. <laughs> Do this because only rich people should be able to see your website. If they're too poor to buy an iPad, they're too poor to buy the products that your company sell. Don't waste your time with them. Do you know what this is? This is a ZX81. When I was a kid, I wanted one of these. This was the must-have, portable, cool, black, sh shiny device of its time. It sold one and a half million in the UK. For the first time, you could go to your local high street and buy a computer. It spawned a whole new industry of independent games developers, app developers. It was a revolution, and now it's in a museum. If you coded only for the ZX81, your code is dead. If you code just for one device, your code will be dead one day.
The only difference between this and a shiny iPad is 25 years. Maybe your website doesn't need to last 25 years, but the web does, except we will destroy it. Do browser sniffing. Do you know what browser sniffing is? When you, when you go to a web page, your browser sends an identifying string to the server. <coughs> it's called the user agent string. And if you want, you can look at that user agent string, check whether it's the browser you like, and if it isn't, you can send them a message saying, sorry, this page only works with Internet Explorer, or sorry, this page only works with Chrome. <coughs> this is a great thing to do. It even worked on Tim Berners-Lee's 25th anniversary site for the web. If you visited using some nightly versions of the major browsers, you couldn't see the video message. Even on Tim Berners-Lee's 25th anniversary website, they were doing browser sniffing. This is brilliant for web destruction. <coughs> it's really, really robust. It can never go wrong. This is a short history of browser sniffing. The first browser was called Mosaic, and that was its browser. That was its user agent string. And then Netscape came along, <coughs> and Netscape had a fantastic invention that is great for web destruction. Do you know what it is? HTML frames. Anybody use frames? Great, you're well on the way to web destruction if you're using frames. <coughs> and Developers love frames because they were cool and new. So they would do browser sniffing. They would look, and if you don't have that browser string, they would say, your browser doesn't appear to use frames. Sorry. <coughs> so when Internet Explorer came along, it supported frames, and Microsoft wanted Internet Explorer users to see framed websites, so they gave the browser string that said Mozilla because people were looking for the word Mozilla. Then Firefox came along with a different rendering engine, but it wanted the framed website, so it said it's Mozilla and it's Gecko because that was their new rendering engine. Then Conqueror came along. That was a, a free open source browser, <coughs> and that said that it's Mozilla. And it's KHTML, but it's like Gecko, they said, because some people were looking for that. At Opera, we believed in choice, so we would let you choose whether you were Mozilla and Internet Explorer and Opera, or you could be Mozilla and Gecko and Firefox and Opera in the user agent string. This, this can never go wrong, this technique, by the way. Safari is Mozilla, and it's WebKit, and it's KHTML, and it's Gecko, and it's Safari, and then Chrome was Mozilla, WebKit, KHTML, Gecko, and Chrome and Safari put together. And there's new ones. Opera 15 became Mozilla, Apple, WebKit, KHTML, Gecko, Chrome, and Safari, and Opera. And Internet Explorer 11 is all of them. What do you notice? Every browser claims to be Mozilla. <laughs> so this is a brilliant technique for web destruction that can never, ever go wrong. <coughs> and cool people use it. This is GitHub. And if it's not, Internet Explorer, then it must be Netscape, GitHub believes. And you can use this, because if it's cool enough for GitHub, it's cool enough for you. This is another great way for web destruction. When people want to go to your website in their web browser, interrupt them and offer them an app. Because they're on a web browser on your website, so what could they possibly want other than to download your app? Everybody's seen this, of course. Want to visit an incomplete version of our website where you can't zoom? Download our app. OK. No, but ask me again every time. <laughs> <coughs> if you really want to annoy people, do what Quora does. We only support reading answers in our Android app. You can't even see it on other things. This is great for web destruction. OK, let's look at the wider world. China. <coughs> the Chinese government produced some statistics. I don't recommend you believe everything that the Chinese government tell you, but these are probably quite good. And they said that 39% of people 
used mobile devices in 2008, and it rose to 46% to in 2009. And at the same time, the numbers of people using desktop browsers went down. In other words, when people were, people's desktops were uh, obsolete, they used mobile. Mobile's huge in China, of course. And China is about 18% of the world. In India, there's one bank branch for every 14,000 people, one ATM for 5,000 people, but a mobile for every 2.3 people in India. <coughs> India is another 18% of the population. <coughs> Excuse me. A Pakistani uh, professor said a mobile phone is the only device which empowers ordinary Pakistanis, is not affected by continual power outages, and it's affordable. Tim, well, at the W3C, and I'm embarrassed because I helped to write this spec. I was on the working group that wrote this spec, and I'm sorry because we said, one web means making, as far as is reasonable, the same information and services available to users irrespective of the device they are using. However, it does not mean that the same information is available in exactly the same representation across all devices. The W3C say, make your content available across all devices. Hippie bullshit, ladies and gentlemen, because imagine what would happen if all of those guys got hold of your content. There are more people living inside this circle than outside of it. Imagine if those people could visit your website on their mobile phones. You might sell more product. You might get rich, you might get more orders, you might become a millionaire, you might sit in a jacuzzi full of champagne being fed caviar by attractive people. And that would be a nightmare, right? That would be a nightmare. I know, I live that life and it's awful. <laughs> Don't let this happen to you. Lock out people with mobile phones and lock out 50% of the world. Do not run the risk of riches, my friends. You can do this by requiring script support and plugins. This is another great way to destroy the web. Pixie Sticks, I don't know who she is, but it's a great name, said, I was asked why I insist upon coding JavaScript from scratch for mobile. JQ Touch, 100K. JQ Mobile, 160K. Censure, 400K. MyScript, 1K. That's why. People in Developing nations have slower networks. That's because of worse infrastructure, and in places like India, it's to do with some reasonable sized mountains that signals have to carry across. If you put in huge scripts, you will cut off those people, even if they can reach your site, because of the download required. This is bustle.com. It's like many other websites. It's got some nice pictures, it's got some nice text, and it's got some nice links. And if you turn off JavaScript, this is bustle.com. <laughs> this is a great way to destroy the web. Require JavaScript even for simple content delivery. And then you can lock out so many people. Anybody here speak Korean or read Korean? No, it's kind of unusual in Italy. I thought you would... All be good. <coughs> this says, strictly no admittance in Korean. And the Korean government are heroes of mine for their web destruction. In Korea, they have the most wired country in the world. The Korean government is giving free 10 gigabit broadband connections to every home and every office for free in Korea. But 99% of computers in Korea are Microsoft Windows. And the reason is the Korean government, by law, requires ActiveX. And ActiveX is a plugin that works only in Microsoft Internet Explorer. And Microsoft Internet Explorer works only on Microsoft Windows. So <coughs> if you want to participate in e-democracy, any kind of online banking in Korea, you must have a Microsoft Windows machine. You cannot participate on an Android phone, on an iPhone, 
on a Mac or on a Linux box. This is web destruction enshrined in law, my friends. This has caused problems. This was a guy who was running for president in Korea. And this was an election issue. He said ActiveX has led to international isolation of Korean IT and inconvenience for users. Fortunately, he didn't win the election. So Korea is still one of the co leading countries in the world for web destruction. Now, are any of you in the Italian parliament? No, that's a shame. But what you can do, hi, hi. You missed the good bits, hi. Um, <laughs> what you can do is you can just make sure that you need Flash for all your content. And kind of Flash is unfashionable, so luckily our friends in Google have invented a new plugin called Native Client. Use it just for simple content delivery. Use it and lock out lots of people. And you too can be like Korea. What a thrill that would be. Make the web country specific. In the States, these are old stats, but the stats are still the same. In the States, the top 10 handsets are kind of high-end handsets. It would be more iPads now, of course, but it's pretty expensive high-end handsets. And in the States, the top sites are Google, stalking old girlfriends, <laughs> or boyfriends, uh, watching funny pictures of kittens, uncensored information, uh, talking bullshit, and, and that kind of stuff. In Bangladesh, in the same month, you have much lower end phones. But stalking old girlfriends, <laughs> kittens, uh, uncensored information, and news. In the UK in the same month, me medium range handsets. Because in the UK we're not rich like the Americans, but we're richer than Bangladesh. And what do we have? Stalking old girlfriends, kittens, uncensored information, talking bullshit. Basically, it doesn't matter where people are in the world. It doesn't matter what disposable income they have. It doesn't matter what kind of device they have. People across the whole world want to consume the same kind of information. So your job as new web destroyers is simply to look at the IP address they come from and say, sorry, you can't access my content if you're outside the US. This is the great way to destroy the web. You can do this. Sniff the IP. If they're not in Italy, tell them to go away. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is some people who didn't destroy the web. There's a, guy, a group of guys who set up this uh, it's a dating site in the States. And uh, these are three um, quite religious Jewish guys. And they knew that in traditional Jewish families, um, it wasn't really done for a boy and a girl to go out, just the two. So they, they made this site, and it organized group dates, like a picnic or a trip to the fun fair for five boys, five girls, so they could meet and get to know each other. And they did lots of advertising and marketing, but they only got 50,000 sign-ups in the States. It wasn't big enough. And they were going to close it down. And they didn't have a web app. They didn't have an iPhone app or an Android app. They had a website that was available anywhere. And just before they started to close it down, they noticed they were getting lots and lots of visits from India and Pakistan. And then they started to get sign-ups. They got 50,000 sign-ups in the US after a year. They were getting 50,000 sign-ups a week in India and Pakistan. Because this model of uh, dating, group dating, for traditional Jewish families worked really well for dating in traditional Hindu and Muslim and Sikh families in India and Pakistan. And so, because they had a worldwide website and they didn't block India and Pakistan, they relaunched a step out, and they're now India's number one place to meet new people. They have offices in Bombay, and they're really, really rich. Because they didn't understand the higher, noble purpose of web destruction. You do, yeah? You do. You don't want the money. You want to be destroying the web. It's a higher goal. Good. So, 
require specific types of hardware. I don't mean specific machines, I mean specific types of hardware. Assume that everybody has a mouse. Are you all reasonably familiar with CSS? What this does is it will show something, a sub-menu perhaps, when you hover over something. But you can only hover if you have a mouse. This is great because people who use the keyboard to navigate or people on a mobile device simply cannot navigate your site. Beautiful way for web destruction, one line of CSS. You can do this tomorrow <laughs> at work. Of course, the hippie bullshit way is simply to also do this on focus and then people who are tabbing or people who are on a mobile device can also see it. But this is hippie bullshit and we are web destroyers. Never let the two be confused. This yellow focus bar, by default on every browser, if you use the tab key to go through links, you see this around the link or the form field you're on. It's the only way that a keyboard user knows where he or she is. If you have a screen reader, if you're blind, then it reads out. But if you have arthritis or multiple sclerosis or a motor problem, you're using visual, a visual display, but you're using the tab key, and you rely on this to know where you are in a page. So, my friends, turn it off. <laughs> One line of CSS, and you can destroy the web for lots of people with motor disabilities. Great, because why should people with disabilities have access to the web? Ah. Assume that everybody's looking at a monitor. So, there is a fantastic prize. Look at this. It's blue, it's underlined. When you click it, it goes somewhere. Any HTML wizards want to guess which HTML tag you would use? There's a prize for the right answer. The prize is a night out with Chris Mills. Anybody want to guess? It's blue, it's underlined, when you click it, it goes somewhere. Come on. An A. An A. Sir, you haven't been paying attention. That's the hippie bullshit way. The web destruction way that is currently used by a very large webmail provider. The web destruction way is a span with some JavaScript and some CSS to turn it blue. So if you don't have JavaScript, it doesn't work. Now, they've done some interesting things. They've put role equals link. And this will tell a screen reader that this is like a link. But it's not a link because it requires JavaScript. And they've also put a tab index of zero. And this is something you can add so that this span can be focused. Of course, this is the hippie bullshit way. A, you don't need any JavaScript. You don't need any tab index. You don't need any role. But don't do this because then people with disabilities can use your website as well, and they have no right to use the web. <coughs> Here's another example from a very large webmail provider. This button-like object, when you click it, it does something. Would any one of our HTML wizards like to win a night out with Chris Mills and tell me which HTML element makes buttony things pressable and do something. Anybody? Sorry? Input, close. Button? No. The big webmail provider uses five nested divs <laughs> with a non-breaking space in the middle with lots of made-up <laughs> attributes there. This, my friends, this is web destruction. They have a tab index in there. Oops, they have a tab index in there to make it focusable. And if they were hippies, they would add role equals button to tell assistive technologies that it is, this is supposed to be a button. If, of course, they believed in the hippie bullshit way, they might do web components. They might have a button element. They would extend it with a web component called cool button. They would, they would register cool button with the DOM and then 
if you don't have JavaScript or your, or your browser doesn't support web components, it still falls back to a button. But don't do this. Don't do this. Use five nested divs with a non-breaking space. I'm really sorry, people of Italy, that none of you have won the night with Chris. Or, this is my favorite, just use an empty body element and then fill it all up with JavaScript. This is great because it means there's no HTML. It's unsearchable by search engines. It's very hard to be accessible for assistive technologies. It requires an extra download of JavaScript. It requires the browser to make the DOM from the JavaScript and thereby drain people's batteries as well. So this is a fantastic method of web destruction, an empty body tag. Another great thing is to break the URL addressing system. URLs are the things that links go to. It's a uniform resource locator. The reason that web, no, no, the, reason the web is so powerful is that it's a web of information. One piece of data is linked with another piece of data via a URL. Directly addressable content is what makes web apps better than desktop apps. If you got all the web into a big saucepan and boiled it for two hours to reduce it, what you would have left are pictures of kittens and URLs. That's the essence of the web, the URL. So if you can break the URL, you can destroy the web. Lifehacker had a very good go. They had this in front of all their URLs, and that required JavaScript to decode it. So when Lifehacker's uh, JavaScript content delivery network broke, all of their websites broke, just because they broke the URL addressing system. Perfect web destruction. Or, if you can't do that, Destroy the web through your terms and conditions. This is the New York Stock Exchange website, nyse.com. And if you go to the New York Stock Exchange website and look at their terms and conditions of use, you get this page. They will not allow you to link to their website. Think about that. If you do link to their website, they will disable them. I'm not sure how, but they will, because they're on the web, but they don't want anybody else linking to them without permission. That's the link. Don't tell them I told you, <laughs> because that's me, and that's American lawyers, OK? If you use a web browser, it's strictly prohibited. You can't use a web browser to get to their site. You cannot let anybody else who shares your computer install an ad blocker if you go to their site. Again, I don't know how they enforce this, but this is a pretty cool way of destroying the web. You can print or download one single unaltered permanent copy of their website. So you can't go to their website on your desktop computer and your notebook, because that would be two computers, and you're only allowed on a single computer. I also like you can do it, but for non-commercial use only, because we all go to the New York Stock Exchange website for leisure purposes, don't we? <laughs> Look at the font size. Look where the scroll bar is. You agree to review this agreement each time you visit the website. <laughs> I guess by comparing it against the printed version that you made earlier. And you'll be aware of any modifications since your last visit. This is legal terms and conditions, web destruction. Brilliant. Go here, cybertriallawyer.com slash user agreement. And in their terms and conditions, which I'm not even allowed to put on the slide, it tells you that in web browsers, you can view source. But they will not allow you <laughs> to view source. And you are prohibited from viewing source because they own all the code, and it's their intellectual property. 
a friend of mine viewed the source. <laughs> Apparently they own jQuery and WordPress as well because that's what the source is actually made from. But this is beautiful. Frighten people with the law to destroy the web. Censor the web. Now, Vietnam, congratulations to Vietnam because they're the newest country to censor the web. <coughs> and they're quite lucky because in Vietnam and Pakistan and China and Iran, they can just censor the web for political reasons. In the UK, we can't. So the people who want to censor the web in the UK, they use the think of the children reason for web destruction. If children are allowed to look at the web, they will soon be drawing pictures of Goatsy for their homework, I believe is the, uh, the fear. So in the UK, we're going to have this. Uh, it will be turned on by default, and parents have to opt in to looking at gambling, pornography, suicide, or porn on the web. Now, this is Clitheroe. It's a lovely town in the UK. And this is Lightwater, another small town in the UK. And this is Peniston, a town in the north of the UK. And for four years, ten years ago, if you were a resident of one of these towns, you could not search for a local business on yahoo.com. Because the thing is with these town names is they all contain these <laughs> strings. And so Yahoo... I'm not joking, Yahoo blocked searches for Clitheroe, Lightwater, or Peniston for years and years. Now, this kind of... <laughs> this kind of false positive is well known in the censorship, sorry, the content filtering industry. In the content filtering industry, this is known as the Scunthorpe problem. I don't know why. Um, of course, I don't really mean that we should destroy the web. We need to do what the Americans did in Vietnam. We need to destroy the village to save the village. Timbo, Tim Berners-Lee said, <coughs> excuse me, we believe that if access to the web increases dramatically, there will be significant social development and greater political representation among the billions of people who currently have no voice. We're web destroyers, who cares? I think America proves that if it wants to export democracy, it can do it in far more effective means from B-52 bombers. But here's the big problem. The internet contributes 3.4% 3 to gross domestic product, averaged over countries in a report by a government management consultancy. The internet creates 2.6 jobs for each one lost to technical efficiencies. Most of the economic value created by the internet is outside the technology sector, with 75% of the benefits captured by companies in more traditional industries. There's a 10% increase in productivity for small and medium enterprises from internet use. And small and medium businesses heavily using web technology grow and export twice as much as others. In fact, an increase in internet maturity similar to the one experienced in mature countries over the next five years, creates an increase in real GDP per capita of $500. It took the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century 50 years to produce the same results. So think of the people in India and Pakistan and China. Imagine what would happen if those guys got access to this. Who would sew our cheap training shoes? Who would make our cheap jeans? Who would assemble our cheap, shiny mobile phones and devices? Frightening thought now. So we all know what this stands for. What does this stand for? You haven't listened. This stands for the wealthy Western web. This is what we must preserve. We need to destroy the web to preserve this so the other guys don't get the benefits that we've had. So, friends, Romans, countrymen, 
join with me and destroy the web. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, Chris and I and David from Microsoft are doing a panel later at five about web performance and we'll be at the networking beers afterwards. So if you have a question or you want to beat me up, uh, come and see me then. Thank you ever so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Rome.